Welcome to another deep conversation on Vinci to the World, your personal journey to health, wealth, and happiness. My name is Dino Delpesh, your host. I am an entrepreneur and a bodyweight strength coach. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's all good. Just stick around and you'll soon find out. My aim with this segment is to have very deep conversation with extraordinary people from the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and abroad. Now, these conversations are designed to bring you greater possibilities and insights into living a healthier lifestyle physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and wait for the big one, financially. Now, if you're the kind of person who attach your value to living a healthier lifestyle, personal development, and self-growth, this is your conversation. Now we're live. Okay, hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. Now today I have a very, very interesting person who's going to be having a, another deep conversation with me. His name is J.R. Spear. Now, just to tell you a little about you know, this awesome individual who I've had the privilege of meeting. Well, J.R. is a former U.S. Navy Marine. You know, and after, after his lifestyle as a Marine, he went on to become you know, a successful business, I guess you should say, a business creator. You know, he has created multiple fitness business in his time and now he's now living his life as an avid business coach to you know fitness coaches like myself so you know i have the privilege of being connected to very incredible people like this so without further ado i just like to bring him up on the screen so you know he can say a bit more about who he is because i've just you know hit the tip of the iceberg of who this amazing person is <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, JR, what's up, man? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, to, to clarify, really, <laughs> I was actually in the U.S. Navy, but I was attached to the Marine Corps. So I don't want to. I don't want to take the title oh. of a Marine since I I wasn't actually a Marine, but I did serve. Okay, okay, uh, okay. On the side, so I definitely want to say that. But yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having Amazing. me. No problem, man. It's nice. It's nice being able to, you know, connect with you like this. This is. I'm I'm so excited about this conversation right now, and you know what what is about to come. You know, but just to to build a bit of context of how the conversation would go, you know, we just break the ice a bit. Then we get into the conversation, and then we have a little trivia where I teach you a little bit about what Vinci to the world is all about, so you can learn about the island here. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, sounds awesome. <laughs> I love always to learn about okay. We're on an island right now. <laughs> <laughs> then, but just. Just before we get started, like like who who is JR Spare, man? What did I miss? Yeah, so I, I have a, a pretty unique background. So I grew up in the martial arts industry since I was, gosh, since I since I pretty much took my first breath. I grew up in a family owned business. My we all, my family wow. owned a martial arts and fitness studio. So I uh, mm. I pretty much came out of my mother kicking. And uh, <laughs> doing that and we started multiple different various styles of martial arts and um, kind of grew up in that competing all over the U S and started teaching when I was 13 and that was a huge pivotal point. And I just kind of grew up, you know, always be able to lead people, always be able, never had a, a fear in my bone when it comes to public speaking being in front of people teaching or anything like that. And, uh, just always became very natural. I mean, I'll be 13 years old and I'm staying in a room, room full of grown adults that are, uh, could be 25, 30, 50 plus adults in a room and I'm taking total control of them and leading them, teaching them about martial arts, fitness, whatever it is. And, and they look at me as that, uh, tra that authority figure and respect me in that sense. Mm -hmm. And that was from a very young age. And, uh, I grew up still competing my entire life. And then, um, right out of high school, joined the military, uh, went into the Navy and uh, had a job that uh, I found out that you could serve with the Marines as well. And didn't realize when I went in, I was only seven or when I signed up, I was 17. So I didn't know what I wanted to do. I signed up as like an aviation boatsman handler. Didn't even know what that was. That's what my grandfather did in the Navy. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do what he does. But I didn't know what they did. And when I was in boot camp, I found out about uh, the job that I had, which I was security for the chaplain. I was the chaplain's assistant. So I uh, performed, did a lot of extra administrative duties, anything that I could to help uh, service him and as well as uh, you know, providing security for him in, in time of combat because chaplains 
in the, in the military, they're the only true non-combatants where they can't carry a weapon, they can't uh, protect themselves. Mm -hmm. So they, they used to put, just put a Marine with a chaplain, but then they actually had a billet uh, where that's all we did. So I got to do that and um, found out about it, switched to switched jobs right at boot camp, went to Marine combat training stuff and served with the Marines and um, definitely had a great experience with that. So um, what I did is when I, when I was in the military, you know, I deployed to Iraq. I don't know. Did you want me to kind of go in a little bit of my experience with that or you want okay. to? Yeah, sure. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. No problem. Man. Yeah, yeah. So when I was in Iraq, um, I, I seen a heck of a lot of stuff, you know, we, I, we, we got there, we left for deployment on September 13, 2006, 2006 and uh, we were there for about nine months. And then on February 7th, 2007, I was involved in a suicide bombing. We were at a walk, walking oh, wow. check. Yeah, so I, I mean, I've seen a lot in the, during things, but this was the most traumatic event that really affected me even to today and in a lot of different ways. And I'll, I'll kind of explain it, but um, I was at a walking checkpoint. It was in Barwana, Iraq, right on the Euphrates River. Um, next to Haditha and the walking checkpoint is we searched everyone that walked in and out of the city so they couldn't they couldn't walk into the city unless they saw us and we had driving checkpoints as well but this was strictly like a, a walking checkpoint and um, during during this time you know me and the chaplain we, we went down there to this checkpoint with uh, you know our CO our sergeant major and all the top brass we were going down because we had a bunch of Marines and sailors that were they were manning this post and and uh, doing their duties and stuff like that so we were going down there just kind of giving moral support and checking on seeing how things are going and if chapel wants to go you know that's that's what we we're going to go do so we go down there it was early in the morning and uh everything's going good for for the whole day and uh i remember staying in the center where with another marine his name was uh corporal david emery and we were chatting for a long time it had to be like you know 30 45 minutes or an hour and i was staying at this one point but we were staying in the center where we could see people it was almost like a, a, a wall, but it had an opening that we could see people going on both directions, whether they're coming or going. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. yeah, so we're, we're standing there, we're chatting, we're doing our thing and just kind of like, you know, being in the present where the locals are, they're walking right past us. And, and uh, it, it just seemed like a normal day. You know, not everyone there in Iraq is bad. I mean, they're normal people too. And, and, you know, so we're having a conversation, get to know them and stuff. And then my chaplain was around the corner um, talking to uh, probably the CEO or first sergeant or something like that. I can't remember who he was talking to, but he was around the corner. And then I just had like this this weird audible voice or tug in my gut or something saying, hey, go check on the chaplain. And I was like, okay. Mm. So, so I, I was like, you know what? Hey, David, I'm going to go check on the chaplain. Haven't seen him in a bit. I just want to see where he's at, make sure he's good, make sure he doesn't need anything. Um, so I, I responded to that that feeling and was walking. And as I was walking, my sergeant major uh, walked right past me, gave our greeting, and as we crossed paths, you know, I was over by a chaplain. Then the guy that was walking through the checkpoint blew himself up. Um, he was strapped to C4. It was uh, it was it was pretty bad. It was very unexpected. He got too close to us and and the checkpoint. And right when they went in there and searched, raised his arms, it, it blew himself up. It was it was uh, strapped with shrapnel and all a bunch of stuff. The blast was so so bad that my sergeant major that I just walked by. He ended up staying exactly where I was at next to David or Corporal Emery and uh, Sergeant Major died. Uh, Corporal oh. Emery, Corporal Emery lost both of his legs. Uh, we had an interpreter that died. We had a female Marine died. We had, it, it was a big bloodbath. And I, oh. I was going was probably knocked unconscious for, for a minute or so. And uh, when I came to it, I uh, saw the chaplain on the ground trying to crawl to, we had like a, almost like a barn type building thing that we had people then when you went on top of the roof, you can kind of see further distance and there was uh, some covering there. And, uh, I saw our gunny and stuff. They were like waving at me. I couldn't see or hear anything. I had like straight tunnel vision, but I saw the chaplain on the ground, just kind of barely moving and trying to crawl. So I grabbed him and, and dragged him like the 25, 50 yards underneath the shelter. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the crazy part is we didn't know it was a suicide bomb until later. We thought it was, a uh, mortars coming in and looking back it's like there was body and blood i mean i could paint the picture a lot worse um but mm. but if you think of it like a movie there was dust and, and smoke everywhere and blood everywhere and it was just it was it was something you only can picture in a movie is where it was just a complete bloodbath and there's things going on and and i was probably one of the closest people to the blast when it happened and i had one little speck of blood in the back of my vest 
and the chaplain had body mm-hmm. parts on him from other people and other things, and so did a bunch of other people. And, and I was only surrounded by the grace of God. Like I'm, I'm only here and living and breathing because of uh, the grace of God, and I'm, I'm super, mm-hmm. forever thankful for it. And uh, yeah, so the, that that's what happened that day. But what I really wanted to tie into with the message, and it took me many, many years to kind of like figure this out and really a lot of reflecting. And even today, you know, that's what 13, 14 years ago or something like that. I still suffer from major back pain. I have ongoing therapy, just have physical therapy this today and have go every single mm-hmm. week. And I suffer some from uh, some brain damage, so like uh, traumatic brain damage and stuff like that. So I have ongoing stuff. So there's, there's ongoing therapy and mental things that I have to deal with when it comes to that. And just, mm. I mean, you just, when, when you hold, when you're holding friends and, and people that you know, and that you served with in their hand while they take the last breath, it, it definitely changes you. Mm. But the biggest point that I'd want to, to bring home with this, yeah, that, that was a, a bad event, but the way that we responded to it is better than anything that you can imagine. Mm. Everyone knew their place. Everyone knew what to do. Everyone knew like, whose job was what when it happened yes we didn't know as a student yeah, right. we thought there was mortars coming in but i can tell you all the corpsmen responded the way they needed to every single marine responded to the injured the way they need to the way the helicopters communication went to the helicopters to come evac all the other people the way the other marines went out and patrolled the city to be able to see if there was any other danger i mean it was just amazing reflecting looking back on just seeing how they mm. responded and uh, I always say that the Mar- United States Marine Corps, the United States military is the best business in the entire world, especially <laughs> the, Marine Corps. the reason why, and this is something that any, any business owner can definitely relate and learn to. The reason why the mm-hmm. Marine Corps is the best business in the world over anything and over and one of the best military, the strongest military is because they have a system for every system. That's there's true. A, That's so true. There, there's a system on how to, to fold your underwear. There's a system on how to <laughs> fold it and put it away. There's a system for every single thing yeah. that everyone needs to do on and how it takes place. I don't care if you're brand mm. new to the military, you've been in for 20 years. If you are stationed in California and get transferred to Okinawa, Japan, or you get transferred over to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, or you get tra- uh, deployed to Iraq or Afghanistan, wherever it's at, everyone knows their place and what they need to do and what the responsibilities yeah. are. And that only yeah. comes with top training, constant practice, and building that muscle. Yeah. So even for That's my true. job, it doesn't matter where I would go in the world with my job. I know exactly what my duties are, what my responsibilities, and mm. what I needed to get done. So we know what the mission is. We know what our job needs to do, and we, we performed and execute that mission. There was no question saying, hey, you know, when you get out there, go figure out what you got to do. No, when you get out there, you know what you got to do. You know what your job is. That PSC knows who the next chain of command is. That Lance Corporal knows who the next chain of command is and who to respond to and who to listen to. Mm. And that's why the military and the U.S. Marine Corps is the best service in the world because they know every single mm. place and they work like a machine. And the only way to do that mm. is from constant practice. Before, it was so funny. Yeah. I went to, uh, I mean, not funny, but it was kind of, the, the, going back. So this past weekend, I went on a, uh, a retreat with some friends down in South, South Carolina, and we, we hiked a bunch of mountains and stuff like that. And uh, during that, you know, there was a lot of reflection, meditation, and and uh, you know, conversations that we had going on. And we talked about this exact thing about the Marine Corps being the best we, in, in in the world, and just talking about the systems and stuff like that. But one of one of the guys asked me, he was like, "So w- when you went over there, was it like a big culture shock? Was it something that?" You went over there, you're seeing different types of people, you're in a different environment. You know, how, how did that make you feel? But the thing is, we are even trained on, on what that's like before we even go. Like we go to different camps where we practice different stuff and where we have uh, actors that are, are Middle Eastern or whatever in that culture and the, we have cities set up that's like like it is where we're going to mm-hmm. go. So when we go to over there, it's not a culture shock. We kind of already are adapted to that environment. Nice, nice. And so when, you, when you're there, you're prepared for it. You're ready to go. You're ready to fight. You're ready for the mission. You're ready to do what you got to do. And mm. what I want to what I want to say is, and, I, and how I relate that to business, and I'll, I'll I'll say it to you as a personal trainer. If you like, there's I, I call that an ambush. If you are an ambush in your life today, are you going to be prepared? But what are those different ambushes? An ambush doesn't need mm. to be that you were in a suicide bombing. Doesn't ambush doesn't mean that you were blown up or anything like that. An ambush can be as something as small as having a sales objection, having a client quit, mm. uh, having a health issue that came about, getting fired from a job, um, losing losing clients. I mean, anything that throws you off balance in your life, 
is 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 what I considered an ambush. It takes you by surprise, mm-hmm. you off balance. But the true character of you is how you're going to respond to it. Respond, you know, yeah. Yeah. Did you train and did you prepare for those times of the ambush? Mm-hmm. So when those things that throw you off balance, that you're prepared for and you're ready to react. And that's when I that's mm-hmm. how you're related to business. In my experience, when I was in that uh, when I was blown up in that suicide bombing is how we all reacted to it. We were prepared for it. Mm. Even though we were, we, it was unexpected, it threw us off guard, it threw us off balance, but we knew how to respond and how to react mm. right after it happened. So when you, you as a business owner, you building your, your personal training business or any other trainer, anyone that's just starting out a business or been in business for 20, 30, 50 years, are you prepared for those kinds of ambushes? And the only way that you're gonna be prepared for it is by building that muscle memory and constantly doing it. If you wanna get better at sales, you gotta do more sales. You want to get me mm. if, if a client quits, is that going to throw, is that going to hurt you? Or are you going to be good? So what, what a lot of people don't know about me is uh, up until yesterday, I had a corporate sales job as well for another company. And oh, uh, wow. yeah, so I was, I was doing sales for a company. I've been in the industry for a little more than six years. It was going extremely well. And I was good at what I did. I, I was consistent with my sales and, and doing different things, sold warehousing equipment, but I, I, to be honest, I'm not shameful to say it, but I was fired. I was fired yesterday, and uh, they, oh, wow. they they called me a last minute meeting um, to the office, which was two hours away, for a 15 minute exit review, and then I drove two hours to, to come home from it. And I'll and the the reasons why they they fired me, honestly, is because they found out about my side businesses and me doing this and helping coaches and things like that. They just found out. Okay. Okay. Me. Yeah, they found, out, they found out some of my activity that I've been doing online, even though it shouldn't have affected my job because it didn't. But they found out they mm. didn't like it. They saw that I was doing my own thing, and that was a reasoning for wanting to let me go. But I say mm. that it, because when I left there, that was I felt ambushed in that situation. It was something that took me and my family off guard. It definitely is affecting mm. me and my family, but I can tell you I'm prepared for it. And it was something that I've been preparing for for a long time, not just for the past – one month, three months, six months, or a couple of years. I've been preparing it for a long time, knowing that if that happened to me, that my family is going to be okay. And it's from constantly mm. being prepared, showing up, taking action every single day, practicing, doing the things mm. that I talk about in regards to sales, doing different things, providing systems, and knowing that I have the hustle and the grind and the passion to be able to help others and serve others. But it's not, it's not going to hurt me and my family knowing that I lost that job. I'm still able to pick up, mm. get going, and I'm prepared for those times of being ambushed, for the times of the, being fired from a job and knowing that I'm ready to go and I'm ready to go full flesh and, and just ready to attack. And honestly, to serve and help as many people as possible. Yes, it changes my routine. Yes, it, it is scary um, to do it. But the thing is, it, one thing that we you see a sign all over Iraq, Port of John signs everywhere. No matter where you go, mm. there's a phrase that it's everywhere. And it says, complacency kills. And you learn that <laughs> in combat, and that is so true in your business. Mm. Complacency kills means if you are comfortable, then you should be scared. If you are sitting back and you're like, hey, you know what? Things are going good. Things are going fine. And you're just kind of letting things roll. That's when you should be scared and you should. that's what's going to kill your business. That's what's going to you know, stop things. And you're going to lose clients and you're, going to, and you're just going to have setbacks because you, you lost in that passion. You lost in that drive. You should always be living in a state of as you're building your business. What do I got to do next? And you should always have that like, hey, you know what? I got to get that next sale. I got to get that next client. I got to do that next project. I got to do that next thing. Keep moving and don't get too comfortable because when you get comfortable, that's when you're going to die. That's when your business is going to fail. You got to stop feeling comfortable. You got to stop being complacent. You got to keep grinding and going. And so the experiences that I had in Iraq definitely taught me so much uh, about my character, about how to run my business, how to do different things, and gave me that grit and that that hustle to just keep showing up every single day. And uh, I have I have an acronym that I that I have on my phone as a, a logo and a picture that I look at every single day. And uh, it's called I call it the Daily Creed, and it's actually the name of my podcast show that um, <laughs> I, have on, I started doing it today. But I call it the Daily Creed podcast, and the reason why is because your your daily creed is your daily belief, is what the creed mm. stands for. And I made that as an acronym where C is commitment, R is resilience, the first E is excellence, then execution, and then discipline. Are you going to be committed to the goals that you set out to do? Are you going to be committed to the mission that you want to be able to achieve? And then understanding that you're going to have good times and bad times, and are you going to be resilient during those difficult times? 
Mm-hmm. Are you going to give excellence and, and not settle for just okay? Are you going to be able to give your best when you're down? Are you going to give your best when you're tired? Are you going to give your best? Or are you going to be like, hey, you know what? It's good enough. Are you going to settle for good enough? Or are you going to push through and give your best always? Okay. The second E is execution. You got to show up and take action every single day. If you think that Straight you're going to take a day off, even on the weekends, some people that I coach, one of my clients, I'm looking at his activity. I was like, dude, what, what the heck is all, all these Saturdays and Sundays? You have no activity. <laughs> that when I, that's when I stack up my most sales for the week is on the weekends because people are sitting around social media doing absolutely Exactly, work. exactly. Nothing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but when you get too comfortable and you're like, hey, you know what? Everyone else is taking a break on these days. Are you going to do that? But you got to mm. take action every single day, and you got to be able to push through even those times that you're tough and not settle for just good enough. And you got to be committed to those goals. And the last part of, of create is the D and it's discipline. It's not just the discipline saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to do this. But it's the mental and emotional capacity of having that discipline to knowing that you are able to not think, react off emotion, not think of uh, responding when you're upset, you're tired, but you're thinking as a professional with good character and with tactful, tactfulness. We always say that in the military is like, hey, respond with tact- tactfulness. You know, go out there and respond with logic and with uh, with good character and with good decision making. So that's what I that's what I challenge people. And that's what I, the message that I like to get out to people is like, hey, live out your daily creed. Are you committed? Are you going to be resilient? Are you going to pursue with excellence? And are you going to show up and take action every day and execute that mission? And are you going to have that emotional and physical discipline that it takes to get that to get your what you're committing to done? So that that's that's kind of like my message that I like to get out there. I tell people and and just the opportunity to share my story because it's not just about being blown up but it's how we react afterwards it's how we responded mm-hmm. during the time of ambush and then in your business are you reacting the same way are you being ambushed through something in your life through your business whatever it is and are you reacting on a positive thing and knowing that hey you know what yes i may have lost that client yes i may have gotten fired yes i may have uh, lost this job or i'm getting these objections but are you going to be, be prepared for it and push through, or are you going to allow those, a uh, lot of those, all those different things to hold you back so you can't pursue forward and give excuses of why you can't achieve the goals that you want to achieve? So that's what I got for you today. That's uh, that's kind of like my message, and hopefully that's encouraging to to you and your, your audience and whoever's listening to it. And uh, um, mm-hmm. I know it's definitely inspired me, and, and I hope you can hear that I'm passionate about this, and it's something that I can I, tell. I can tell. <laughs> I love it, man. Loving it. Yeah, it's something I love talking to people about. It's something that I, I I don't I don't allow excuses to come in. Like anyone that says, "Hey, you know what? COVID set me back, or I lost my job in doing this." I'm like, you got so many opportunities in today's world. Straight like, up, yeah, you know, straight up. Yeah. Anything that you want to be able to do, you have the opportunity to do it. It's your choice if you're going to allow the excuses to hold you back, or you're going to take action mm-hmm. to figure out how to do it. Don't settle on figuring out how it's going to get done 100 percent all the way through. Get started now, and then figure it out along the way. That's what you yeah, gotta do. You gotta show up. Because if you wait for perfection, yeah. if you wait for the project to get done, and you wait for your program to get done, you are never gonna you're you're never gonna be get out there and get anything started. Hey, Beach Boy, I haven't seen you in forever. What's up, Devil Dog? <laughs> That's a Marine right there. So he, he served with me. Uh, not in Iraq, but first duty station. But uh, anyways, yeah, that's my message. That's what I got for you, man. <laughs> man, that's that's right on point, bro. You know, that's that's literally consistency in action you know and you've you've literally literally give the entire formula you know yeah. having systems you know for your systems you know that make sure that you stay on track with the things that you're doing and always showing up and taking action even when it's not good even in the bad times you know and don't let those excuses come in and try to push you to the whistle thinking oh you know i can't do this because of you know? you know, I can't stand people like, especially personal trainers, when they're like, "Man, I put a post out there and no one is actually responding to me, and I can't seem to get more clients because uh, no one's re- liking my stuff or, or anything like that." Mm-hmm. But the thing is, they post one time and they think that the whole that everyone that they're going to get all this business and everyone's going to do it. It's like, dude, you exactly. need to show up not just one time a week. You need to show up every single day, not just every day, yeah. one time a day. You need to show up multiple times a day. How many times do you want people to be able to see you and and mm. respond to what you have to say? And if you're not showing up all the time and staying in front of you in front of their face and being top of mind for all your clients, they're gonna stop thinking about you and they're gonna find someone else who is doing it. So if you exactly. want to be top of mind for every single person when they're thinking about a coach or a trainer, you need to show up every single day so they can't stop thinking about you. So you're almost in their face mm. every time they open up their feed. The first thing that they see is something mm. for you. 
And if you're not doing exactly. that, you don't have an excuse of why you're not getting new clients. You guys have, every, mm. all of us have a perfect platform that's completely for free on any social media platform, whatever you choose to do, whether it's a podcast, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or, or Tinder, whatever you want to do. You got, you have all these different platforms that you have the opportunity to be in front of your audience, but they're going to stop thinking about you when you stop thinking about them. And the other thing mm. is if you don't know what your message is and you don't have clarity on it. A confused mind is always going to leave. So you need to make sure that you have your message completely clear before you start getting on there. I can tell you, I did not prepare for this call today, but I know exactly what my message mm -hmm. is. And I, and I know I can speak with yeah. authority of what it is because I'm consistent with it every single day. I talk about every single day. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't matter if you talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, if you talk to me uh, in a group setting and you ask me different questions, my answer is always going to be the same. All the time, I'm all. My message is always gonna be the same because I'm consistent with it. I'm always out there posting. I'm always out there helping people. But I, it drives me nuts when people do not show up every single day and they give excuses of why their business isn't growing, why they're they're not doing it. It's not that you're a bad trainer. It's not that you're a bad coach. It's just that the fact is that people just don't know you. And the way that they get to know yeah. you is by you showing up and taking action every single day. You need to do more than one day, one time a day. You need to do two times a day, three times a day, a hundred times a day, whatever it takes to be in front of their face until you get to the place that you want to be. But you got to take action and show up every single day. Definitely, definitely. I know when you're saying that the same discipline, the same self-discipline transfer over into you managing your life and your body as a system. Yeah, man. You know? same rules apply like we're living in an age where right now we can have every information we need about being healthy online we don't need personal trainers or coaches it's all there for us you know it's a matter yeah. of just being consistent and as you said having that strong why as to why you want to execute having that message that you repeat to yourself so even though when you're ambushed whether you're ambushed by your diet your ambush by an injury, what have you, you know, you still, you know, you still stand by your creed. I know, take the small steps to get in there, take imperfect actions. Yeah, man. Just like you said. Yeah. Well, if you, don't, if, you go into, if you don't know your message yourself, neither will your clients. So how do you expect your clients exactly. to know exactly what you do and what you, what you can help from exactly. whatever problems if you don't even know what your message is? If you're giving one message today and it's completely yeah. different tomorrow, what do you, what do you think is mm. going to happen? They're going to not know what you're doing either. So you got to dial yeah. in your message and stick with one type of person with one type of problem with one type of process. So stick mm -hmm. to have singular focus and be completely in tune with what your message is and have clarity on that. Because if you don't, no one's going to know what you do and they're going to find someone else who does. Mm, that's true. That's true. Well, I didn't get to ask this question, but you know, you've shown how much of a superhero you are. And the magic question that is coming up is like, if you had to have a superpower, like, what would that be and why? My superpower, what would that be? Um, yeah. <laughs> gosh. You know, my, one, one thing that I always try to teach and, and train people on is, like, you don't need to be certified to coach or to help people or anything like that. You need to be certified to help people and to serve people. And if we're not making a difference in our world to serve people, then – there's, there really is no reason for taking a breath every single day. So everything, every single day you should be showing up to doing that. But my superpower is like, I, like I want to be able to give as much as I can. Like I want my superpower to be like, not have anything hold me back with nothing financially, nothing physically, nothing uh, emotionally that's holding me back that from being able to help that next person, that next uh, trainer, the next person to be able to fulfill their dream, to be able to serve and, and that, that's why I wish my superpower was that I can just have that energy and the financial means mm -hmm. and everything that I can do to just kind of get out there and serve to help people. Because reality is if, we, if we're not helping or serving people, then there's really no purpose in life. Like you you got to get back yeah. to society in some sense or you're just wasting space. Yeah, that's true. So that's, that's, true. That's, my, true. that's what I want my superpower to be is to be out there to serve and help people. And, uh, and the reason why is because I just believe in giving back and there's uplifting and, and helping other people see their full potential. Wow, that's powerful, man. That's powerful. Yeah. I think I think that that's that's that that's a magical piece of you know statement that you've shared. You know, I think with that, I think we can start rounding up the conversation with the next segment, you know, going right into something that I call Vinci Trivia. You know, as you're aware that I'm from the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So just to give yeah. you a bit of a context, Vinci 
is actually is actually short for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So that's why my segment is called Vinci to the World. So before we end this session today, I have three questions you know, that I'm gonna ask you about St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's a multiple choice question, so you'll see the option. So I hope you're ready. So far, none of my guests have ever gotten all three correct. I would probably get all of them wrong, just so you know, but uh, <laughs> that way I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> That's all good, man. So I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just bring the questions up on the screen. Are you seeing it? Yeah, Vince Trivia. There you go. Okay, let's go. So question number one. What's the capital of St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Is it A, the Grenadines? Is it B, Kingstown? Is it C, Jamaica? Or is it D, Kingston? Uh, C, Jamaica. C, Jamaica. Okay. You, is that your final answer? Yeah, that's my final answer. Okay, and the correct answer is the capital of the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is Kingstown, not Jamaica. <laughs> I told you I wouldn't know anything about those islands. <laughs> Well, you're learning something new today. You know, Jamaica capital is actually Kingston. It sounds similar to ours, but it's it's a, a slight different. Very good now. Hmm. Okay, question number two. The island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is made up of how many islands and keys? Because there's a major island that is called St. Vincent, and there's a chain of island that is called the Grenadines. So in total, how many islands in total are there? Is it A, 12, B, 32, C, 2, D, 15? I'm gonna go big, I'm gonna just say 32. My man. And the correct answer is, the island of St. Vincent and the Grandines is comprised of, yes, 32 islands and keys. <laughs> good guess. <laughs> That's a good guess, I like, go big or go home, eh? Yep. <laughs> Okay, and the final question is, what's the national bird of St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Is it A, the Grey Jay? Is it B, Amazona Gilidingi? Is it C, the Mockingbird? Or is it D, the Blue Crane? I'm gonna say uh, C, the Mockingbird. Okay, is that your final answer, sir? Yeah, that's my final answer. Okay, and the correct answer is, the national bird of St. Vincent and the Grenadine is the Amazonia Gilidingi. Yeah, I don't even know what that known is. As, <laughs> it's also known as the St. Vincent parrot. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate the little education. Uh, no problem, man. So the next time you're planning on taking a trip to the Caribbean and you drop by St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you know, you have a few little things that you can talk to with the locals here. And you won't, you won't, how to say, this is your cultural adaptation process before you have entered into the island, you know? So you yeah, won't see like a foreigner. I'll feel, <laughs> you know, uh, when I take my wife, I'll feel smart to be able to tell her some of the little, little facts. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but it was really great having you on, man. It was a really enlightening conversation. And, you know, the stories that you shared have, being you know really a learning lesson for me personally and the creed that you stand by you know commitment resilience excellence execution and being disciplined you know that's something that i myself would take with me you know from this conversation i would always remember you know if you're not showing up every day you know executing on the things them that you believe in are the goals that you want to achieve personally, then you have no reason to complain about why you're not getting the results that you want. You know, and yeah. that, that's one of the major takeaway, you know, you know, for me. And you know, it's like it's it's a privilege and an honor to be able, you know, to be surrounded by minds like your own. So I don't know if there's anything else you would like to leave before we end this segment. Like, especially like if somebody would like to get connected to you or start working with you, like what's the means of doing that? You can just, you know, share the whole cabang. 
Yeah, I like to, I mean, what I do is I help fitness professionals automate their online sales process so they can get more leads and grow their business. And if they want to uh, get extra help, and I, I've helped more than 63 trainers in the past four months um, do just that. If they want more help, they can look me up on my private Facebook group, which is uh, Fit Pro Funnels. And uh, they can shoot me a message there. They can request to join our group. Um, I only let personal trainers in that group. So if you're not a personal trainer, don't get offended. But uh, you get, you have to be a personal trainer or a fitness and wellness coach of some sort to be able to join my group. But it's uh, Fit Pro Funnels. If you're outside that group, I do help people outside of the fitness world. You can just look me up on Facebook um, at JR Spear. Shoot me a private message. I'm nice. I'm not going to bite your head off. I'll respond to you. <laughs> Love to get connected. Okay. That's that. So both information is right below his face there on the screen. Let me see. It's no, it's on the other side. Right <laughs> below there on his screen. So if you want to get that, you can. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, over there. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. So yeah, JR, man, it was it was a great conversation. I know you have stuff that you need to deal with at four. So I'll let you enjoy the rest of your day. Have a blessed Perfect. one, bro. And thank you again. No, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for this opportunity and allowing me to share my message. I appreciate it. Bless up. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed another conversation on Vincent to the World. My boy, JR Spear, coming in with a ton of value, you know, consistency in action. And if there's anything that you should take from this conversation is you know, the whole idea of having a creed. And yeah. Have a wonderful day. Stay blessed and respect. One love. <laughs> You've made it to the end of another deep conversation on Vinci to the world. And I hope that this conversation has brought you a ton of value. As I said, that my aim here is to act as a bridge between two worlds. That of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and that of the network of experts I've had the opportunity of connecting with throughout the years. Now to ensure that my mission here has been accomplished, all I ask is for you to leave a comment in the comment section stating what top three insights did you gain as a result of this conversation. And also if you like, you can also leave one actionable step that you can take in the next seven days that is going to elevate your personal development. I'm Dino Delplesh, your favorite bodyweight strength coach. One love. <laughs>